Somewhere in the Alps. So, Agent Gracefully, you're part of our spy exchange program from Canada? Try not to say my name too often. I'm trying to travel incognito. Actually, you're traveling in the Alps. What do you have there? I got something very important out of a smelly trash can. Well, of course it's smelly if you got it out of a trash can. You need a hobby. No, not smelly. Smelly! As in the society of meaningless evil larceny lying and yelling. Of course, our evil nemesis. Spy Fox, you've got to get this trash bag to Spy Corps headquarters. No, I've got a better idea. I'd better get this trash bag to Spy Corps headquarters. Oh, and take this gadget from Professor Quack. You may need it. What is it? Dehydrated skis. The side of this little pill is a pair of skis. All you have to do is add water. And pray tell, why would I need a pair of skis? I came to get information, not recreation. You may need them to get away from those bad guys. Good luck, Spy Fox. Guys, got water? I've got to get out of here. Although this would be a nice getaway cottage, I've got to get this bag to Spy Corps headquarters. Hello, everybody. Praise be to God and welcome to a new Colorful Arty Let's Play. By actually popular request, we are doing Spy Fox 2, some assembly required today. I was planning on doing this a little later on in the year, but I've actually had quite a few people at request that I do this because they really like my first Let's Play of Spy Fox 1. So I'm really excited to get started. This is a fantastic game, filled with all the, the puns as you can already see by the bad pun counter on the right. It's gonna be a good time. So this is Spy Fox 2, some assembly required. It's not quite as good as the first game, but it's still pretty awesome. And as you can see right now, we are Spy Fox and we are trapped in this little ski hut in the Alps. Well, first thing we gotta do is we have got to get out of here. All right, so the interface is pretty much exactly the same as it was in the first game. You've got your item inventory here. You can write notes down Here's here. Here's where my notes go. Yeah, I use the gadgets top balloons here. to gather information. And then over here, you got your spy watch. You can save and load and quit the game if you want. You can call Mobile Command Center Mobile to get some advice. Command Center. And there's a new fun game that we can play as well. Fanes from Space. I can't stop playing things from space, but I'll get my work done. Really? <laughs> so, Fins for Space is basically like a Galaga clone, but I'd say it's a lot more fun than Galaga. We'll be getting into that later on, as fun as it would be for Spy Fox to just be playing phone apps in the cottage while these bad guys are trying to bust him out. Yeah, that, that doesn't really fly. <laughs> that, that's not what a spy would do. And as is the usual for the Humongous Entertainment games, you click on stuff and stuff happens. If I was wearing skis, I bet I could escape from those goons down that Olympic ski jump. Well, thank goodness there just happens to be one right outside the door, right? It's a bucket of water. Well, we got the bucket of water, so clearly we gotta dump a garbage bag in there. That's not going to do me any good. Nor will it do the environment any good. No, we gotta take, simple puzzle, we just gotta take the dehydrated skis and hydrate them. Water, work your magic. The dehydrated skis are now rehydrated. And just like that, we can break out. Feet don't fail me now. Skis, I mean. <laughs> In the nick of time, too. Dang, spy Fox I wonder good. which way I should go. So all the different ways all lead to the same area, the exit to the Alps. Let's go this way. 
so much for being stealthy. He's just Which way should I go? Guys. So I'm not sure if the pig will actually goes. catch us or not. Yep. It'll do it automatically if you take too long. <laughs> Poor Yeti. So there are a bunch of different pathways. Oh, hey, it's the airplane from the first game. Spy Fox just happened to <laughs> fly through the window. Did you miss me, Chief? So you've analyzed the trash bag, I see. And what have you found? It's a model box 1-1000 scale for one evil robot. On the side, it says, Some Assembly Required. Sounds like an excellent title for one of my adventures. <laughs> it has a mailing label that reads, To La Roche, Care of Chateau La Roche, World's Fair. Hmm. Inside the box are assembly instructions. You'd better take these with you, Spy Fox. Wow, you can learn a lot by reading. <laughs> if Smelly is involved, they must be up to their usual no goodness. You'd best go check out this World's Fair. Monkey Penny and Quack have already set up the mobile command center. I'm on my way, Chief. Spy Fox, are you okay? Shaken, but not stirred. Monkey Penny. So it looks like we're on to something big. Yes, I think Smelly is up to some monkey business, Monkey Penny. And it looks like it's up to you, me, and Professor Quack to get to the bottom of it. Well, you and me anyway, Monkey Penny. I brought the <laughs> assembly instructions I got out of the Smelly trash bag. Well, of course it's smelly if you got it out of a trash bag, Spy Fox. No, Monkey Penny, not smelly. Smelly, as in the Society for Meaningless Evil, Larceny, Lying, and Yelling. Our evil nemesis. Why don't you leave those assembly instructions here with me? Then you can refer to them whenever you're back here at the Mobile Command Center. And remember, you can contact me via your spy watch at any time. Don't forget to check out the spy vending machine, Spy Fox. It's full of new gadgets for you to try out. I'm sure you'll find some of them quite useful. Thanks. Now I need to go get busy and go give that LaRoche up a chateau, LaRoche, a visit and find out just what he's up to. Yeah, so now we're at the Mobile Command Center. It's different from the first game because we're not on a Greek island underwater. Now, here we're actually going to the World's Fair in this uh, Let's Play, so that's gonna be fun. Spy Fox, the fate of the world rests on your shoulders. You need to leave Mobile Command and start your mission. You're right, Monkey Penny. I'd better get going and see just what fiendish skullduggery this Napoleon LaRoche character is up to. Professor, you're amazing. Is there anything you can't do? Well, I can't touch my elbows together behind my head, and I've tried for hours. <laughs> oh, never change, Professor Quack. Mo Please stand by. Uh, Spy Fox, I'm right behind you. Stop playing with your spy watch and go save the world. Just checking the batteries, Monkey Penny. Batteries are A-OK. -okay. All right, so for this video, I think we're just gonna kind of get into the World's Fair, which actually might take a decent bit of time, but it's not too bad. So we got the vending machine over here. That's Best Professor Quack's spy gadget vending machine. I bet some of those could be quite useful in solving this caper. So Spy Fox 1, Spy Fox and Dry Cereal had a bunch of different paths. There are two different paths to get to Kid's Fortress, and then there were three different paths on to, uh, to deactivate the weapon. Then there were two different paths to actually reach the blimp. In this one, however, there are just two paths. The second game of Spy Fox only has two distinct paths. And you can tell which path will be available based on whether this particular spy gadget is in the vending machine. Spy Heat. This looks like some hot work. How does this gadget work, Professor Quack? Now this gadget, I'm really proud of. You can spray it on something, say, like a thermometer, and watch the temperature rise right before your eyes. Now that's a gadget that really rises to the occasion. You can say that again. All right. 
Now that's a gadget that really rises to the occasion. Hmm, light on the palate, rough on the tummy. Oh, Spy Fox, that was bad. So one, one thing I don't like as much about the second game compared to the first game is the quality of the puns goes down in this one, and pretty much pretty much all of the humor is derived just from really bad puns, which I, I like bad puns, don't get me wrong, but I felt like the first game had a, a more sophisticated humor and it like made you laugh out loud a bit more, whereas this is more just groaning. Not that that's a bad thing, it's just a bit of a downgrade, so let's get that one. You're gonna need that's that for the this spy pack. heat. So I'll try to just get a bunch of the gadgets here. So next up. I bet these are cool. Spy skates, they look sharp, Professor Quack. How do they work? I've always loved the grace and beauty of figure skating, but being in the spy biz never left time for the years of training. So I created these. You simply slip them on and insert a diagram of the skate maneuver you want to perform, and voila! The skates, with you in them, perform it perfectly. Well, those could sure help to put the villains on ice. Ah, right, Spy Fox. I like these new blueberry-flavored blueprints. So Quack's still in the business of eating all the blueprints that he makes, which... It's a cool character quirk of his. Um, I don't really see how p doing ice skating, fancy ice skating tricks is gonna help us save the world, but I mean, come on. Those are the spy skates. We gotta get them. We got it. You never know if you just gotta show up that kid across the street and be like, oh, you think you're good at ice skating? Well, wait till you see Spy Fox ice skate. And provided we will, we go to the library and check out a book of all of the different figure skating moves and dioramas of them. A spy key replicator can. What's the key to this gadget, Professor Quack? That's a one-shot camera, like no other in the world. It's specifically made for replicating keys. You take a picture of the key you want to replicate, then bake it in an oven. The picture shrinks down and hardens into an exact duplicate of the key you took the picture of. It can only hold one picture at a time, but you can take a picture over another picture. If you bake a picture into the wrong key, just insert the key back into the camera and it will turn back into key fill. I'm sorry, what did you say? Don't worry, it's a point and shoot easy bake gadget. It's a good thing I need my fiber. <laughs> you don't have to eat the blueprints, Quack. You're, That's no one's the asking you. key to. replicator can. There's some really cool spy ga gadgets in this though. I felt like in the first game, the spy gadgets were pretty simple. In this one, they get a bit more intricate, and they're pretty awesome. The Termite Grenade. I'm sure this gadget isn't bug-free, Professor Quack. How does it work? You've got to be careful with this one, Spy Fox. Toss it at something made of wood, and get out of the way. It's good for one serious pulping. That's not something you want laying around the house. Not unless you're good friends with a carpenter. These blueprints are an acquired taste I haven't acquired yet. So that one sounds pretty, pretty awful, actually. Like, holy cow, a grenade that like blows up and termites go everywhere. That's ugh, no thank you. An alarm deactivated. What in the world could this gadget be used for? Well, it's used to turn off alarms. You attach one end to where the alarm signal is coming in and then attach the other end to where the alarm signal is going out. The alarm signal is then redirected harmlessly into the alarm deactivator, keeping the alarm from going off. It just looks like a wire with two alligator clips on either end. Yes, it's beautiful in its simplicity, isn't it? I once printed these on exploding paper, but man, did those cause heartburn. So, that actually sounds like a useful gadget for a spy, but believe it or not, we don't need that in this path. This, however, we do. The Fingerprint Replicator Utensil Kit. How does this work, Professor Quack? You'll eat this one up, Spy Fox. You place the fingerprint sending fork device on your target's plate. Then, when they pick it up to start eating, their fingerprint will show up on the fingerprint receiving spoon device. 
this is hands down one of your best spy gadgets yet, Professor Quack. I hope to follow it up with a matching salt and pepper shaker. Maybe if I mix these with a little goat's milk. Nah, let's not go there. <laughs> callback! I really like the callback there. This is the only spy gadget that you actually need That's in every playthrough, replicator utensil. regardless of which path you take. And thankfully, those are the only four spy gadgets we actually need, because we are now out of room. We never actually have to go back to the vending machine to get a second helping, and this is the last spy gadget available. Let's just take a look at it. The Stealth Vac. How does it work? You just hook up the handy nozzle, then press vacuum to suck up the particles into the handy travel bag. Or press reverse vac to blow the particles housed in the travel bag back out through the nozzle attachment. And it does it all in perfect silence. Ingenious, Professor Quack. I'd prefer those between two slices of bread, but when duty calls, Let's hope you never have to make those again, because it's like, oh yeah, we can make another, like, cheese and safe cracker kit from the first game. Like, Quack, just make another for your, your blueprints. Uh, Spy Fox, I ate them all. It's like, oh, great. Well, there goes ten years of work down the drain. Okay, so we've got, we, we visited the Chief before coming here. I like to think that the Chief is in that car, right there. It's definitely not a tourist going to the World's Fair. Also, holy cow, <laughs> that is a lot bigger on the inside than it looks on the outside, and that is quite an antenna. Where are they plugged into? Because clearly that is using a lot of electricity to keep Spycore Mobile Command Center up and running. Uh, what outlet plug are they putting that into? It's like Pete from the Goofy movie. Where he like is like, oh hey Goof, we're gonna plug this in your hotel room, and then it's like, it, it's like the please stand by. What? <laughs> How's the mission going, Spy Fox? Have you gotten into the Chateau La Roche? I'm still working on that monkey penny. Well, keep trying, Spy Fox. I know you'll figure a way out. Ah, I get the picture. Thanks, monkey penny. What? <laughs> monkey penny plays the bagpipes. What? I've never seen that before, and I've played this game many, many times. That is hilarious. It says World's Fair Entrance. Well, let's go in, shall we? Let's go to the World's Fair. Hmm, the entrance is closed and it's locked up tighter than an impervious steel door. Whoa, Godzilla walking in the background. It says World's Fair. Yeah, so the World's Fair, when I was a kid, didn't even realize that was a thing. I just thought it was like a place for where Spy Fox was going, but no, it's not. It says Chateau La Roche Service Entrance. I wonder what country the World's Fair is taking place in this time. Probably America, because it's an American game. Are you happy with your job as a service guard? Oh yes, quite happy, thank you. Still, I like to immerse myself in the peaceful harmony of bungee jumping. I couldn't hear what he was saying. Maybe I should turn up the volume a bit on my computer. Actually, I think I will. No harm. Oh wait, maybe I can't. No, I can't while I'm running Windows XP. Rats. Excuse me, sir. What seems to be the problem? Well, I hate to be the bearer of bad tidings, but unfortunately, I cannot allow you to enter through the service entrance. I'm sorry, but I can only let cashiers with proper ID in today. See? It has the job title of cashier and a matching photo. I seem to have lost my ID. Can you let me in without one? I feel your pain, sir. Really, I do. Unfortunately... <laughs> seems that I'll have to find a way to get the proper ID. <laughs> I love, I love that. I'm sorry. I can only let waiter, waiter. I can only let cashiers with this specific ID card and their name and a picture just like this in. Oh, by the way, there's a photo booth over there for you to take crazy photos, like you pretending to be a cashier. Wow, that's very convenient. Do you ever feel bored having the job of a service guard? Oh, I hardly ever get bored. Okay. Are you happy with your job as a service guard? Yes, he is. Have your admission standards changed at all? I'm sorry, sir. 
you still need a cashier ID card to use the service entrance. Unfortunately, I must insist that you have one. I don't suppose you can let me through the service entrance just this once. No, I'm sorry. Unfortunately, I have to insist that you show me your cashier ID card. Also, there's a giant statue of a robotic dog in the background. That's interesting. Is there any chance that you can bend the rules just a little bit and let me through? I'm sorry, sir, but I cannot. Unfortunately, I must request that you stop asking me to let you through without a proper cashier ID card. <laughs> Have your admission standards changed at all? No, they haven't. Please stop doing it. Oh, one thing. Running this on Windows XP, it is very hard to pull up the inventory oh, system. Please stand by. It's like one pixel for you to go through. Calling Monkey Penny. <laughs> How's it going, Spy Fox? <laughs> it's not. It's at a standstill. Have you checked your notepad? I will do that. Thanks, Monk. Anytime, Spy. Monkey Penny, out. <laughs> okay, that's... I must not have called Mobile Command Center very much in my past playthroughs. Just holy cow, that's amazing. Oh, wait, can we, uh... That won't do me any good. What? Uh, make it break out into a fever. <laughs> These are the the adult solutions that I find to this. <laughs> a free photo booth. Just one of the many joyous pleasures in life. <laughs> Especially at the World's Fair. Hmm. It says free photos. Also, Pajama Man reference. Love that. <laughs> Don't love that. <laughs> What is the deal with photo booths? Wait, that's not that's not Jerry Seinfeld. It says free. <laughs> One of the simple pleasures in life, getting things for free. Oh yeah, so we can like dress up in different outfits here. This is like a decked out photo booth. Holy cow, that's amazing. Uh, we can change the background too. Dishwasher, jockey. Ballerina, clown, cashier, so, yeah. tourist. Oh, I'm definitely a tourist. Just your average snow going to the World's Fair. Golfer, waitress, not waiter, waitress. wrestler. <laughs> Dane, Spy Fox got cut. How did he do that? Fisherman. <laughs> so yeah, obviously we're gonna need to clown. become. Cashier. Dressed as the cashier and then take the photo. So we can have no background. Arena. <laughs> I'm the cashier at the wrestling arena. No big deal. France. <laughs> the way we I am the cashier in France. <laughs> dentist. <laughs> None. Okay, obviously we're doing dentist. the dentist one. Holy cow. <laughs> it's like, look, I'm a cashier. Sir, it says you're a cashier at a dentist office. That's the same thing. You just said you had to be a cashier. I guess that's true. <laughs> that's not really my best son. <laughs> Imagine Spy Fox has updated his profile picture on Facebook to him as a cashier in a dentist office. It's like, oh, Spy Fox, did you change your job? <laughs> Gee, that's too bad. Maybe next time you can avoid that white splotch by taking the picture at somewhat of an angle. That way the flash won't reflect off the window and show up in the photo. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> you know, I don't suppose you can let me through the... Oh yeah, because it's still just a photo. It's not actually an ID. I mean, you could cosplay it as a cashier, but he's not going to let you in unless it's actually an ID. The World's Fair looks as if it will be a spectacular event. It's too bad that you'll be cooped up in here while I'm out there where the action is. Well, nobody ever said life was there. It's true. Do you know what I wanted to be before I became a spy? No, Spy Fox. What did you want to be? A curtain salesman. But I could never get the hang of it. Yeah, it's just stuff like that that happens all throughout the game. Hey, Monkey Penny, check this out. That's not going to do me any good. All right, so you might have noticed the big machine over here we haven't examined. This is a rather cool-looking device. What is it? One of those novelty gadgets that lets you see what you'll look like in 50 years? It's an ID maker. Of my own creation, of course. It's for making identification cards. Fascinating. How does it work? You place a photo in the photo slot, choose an occupation, and any name you like, then press the Process ID button. 
A completed ID will pop out of the machine. Professor, you're amazing. What if I made an ID, but then I change my mind and want to make a different one? Well, if you don't like the ID you created, you can make another card. Just reset the name and occupation. Insert a new photo, then press the Process ID button again. That sounds like fun. Creating false ID cards is something only secret agents can do, and then only when we're on a case. Right! <laughs> thank you for the <laughs> for, thank you for that educational tidbit, Spybox. That way we aren't gonna have people making uh, criminal IDs all over the place. There, now I can make an ID card. <laughs> I know it looks like I'm a waiter, but I'm actually a band leader named Chuck. Chuck. <laughs> Professor Quack's machine works perfectly. My identification card is complete. Ah, yeah. I expect that this will come in quite handy. Yeah. I wonder if you like, took a picture of yourself as a clown, would he be like, well, it says you're a cashier, so I guess you're a cashier. Or would he be like, um, that doesn't look like a real ID. There you go. That's my ID card. Well, that's great. Oh, I feel so bad for having to do this, sir. The job is incorrect on your ID card. Maybe you use this card when you work somewhere else. I'm afraid I can only allow cashiers to go through the service entrance. I hope you understand. Man, that's like the nicest security guard ever. I mean, don't get me wrong, security guards aren't supposed to be super nice, because, you know, gotta keep people out. Um... <clears throat> Can I not? Oh no, do I have to take the photo again? That's not going to do me any good. Oh no, do I have to take a new photo? Oh man, come on. Eh. That won't do me any good. Maybe I can only have, oh, okay, so I do have to take a new photo. Well, let's test out my hypothesis. So let's make ourselves... Torch. What? Wrestler. A wrestler at obviously the wrestling no. arena. Arena. Boom. Well, I'm certainly in disguise. <laughs> yeah. Who knew Spy Fox was that ripped? Holy cow. <laughs> you know what they say, the, the tuxedo slims you down a good bit. So I have an ID card and just a photo. There. Now I can make an ID card. All right, this time. Ballerina. Cashier. I'm a cashier named Reginald. Reginald. That looks like a Reginald if I've ever seen one. <laughs> what is he gonna react like hmm. to? I already have an ID card. I don't really need two. I know, I'll just recycle the old card and keep this one instead. I expect that this will come in quite handy. Reginald the cut cashier. That is me. Is this actually gonna work, or is, is he? Or am I gonna have to be like a, a cashier in the photo too? Oh, gonna need to be the cashier in the photo too. Here's my ID card. Oh, I'm so happy for you. Oh, I feel so bad for having to do this, sir. The picture is incorrect on your ID card. It seems that this is one of your old ID cards, perhaps from a previous job at a different company. I'm afraid I can only allow cashiers to go through the service entrance. I hope you understand. <laughs> it is amazing this guy's not getting super suspicious. <laughs> Seriously. Wow. J Clown. Cashier. We right. oui, oui. France. We are the cashier in France. <laughs> well. I apologize to everyone from France that I have offended. Anyhow, enough getting the things wrong on purpose. I thought that would be funnier than that than it was, but that's okay. All right. Maurice. Roscoe. Nancy. Muriel. Carlton. Carlton the cashier. It's alliterative. Hmm. I All right. Got the picture of the cashier. We've got the cashier as the occupation on the ID. Cool. We can get in now. Here you are, sir. One cashier ID card. Oh my, I'm so happy that you were able to find it. Let me guess, 
It was in your other pants, wasn't it? Why, yes it was. You must be psychic. If you'll excuse me, I'm late for work and they need me in the restaurant. Oh, I understand. I won't keep you any longer. I'll just keep your ID on file for you, Carlton. Keep up the good work. Have a spectacular day. And if I don't see you tomorrow... <laughs> what a guy. And that is quite the service yeah, yeah, yeah. entrance. So the Chateau La Roche is apparently a <laughs> restaurant inside the robotic doll. Come to the kitchen Interesting. Time. What kind of cake would you bake for a baseball team? Why, a bund cake, of course. Come to the kitchen oh yeah, time. she's just an endless supply of bad puns, too, which is fantastic. My, that's quite an oven. Mind if I give it a try? Only chefs can use the kitchen equipment. In that outfit, you could possibly be a waiter, but definitely not a chef. I'm sorry, but those are the rules. <laughs> well, she looks like the chef. I mean, she doesn't have a chef hat, but she oh, she's just a cook. Cook and chef are actually different. <laughs> the bugs are having a good time playing sports. I need to get inside that Chateau La Roche and talk to this La Roche character. Mobile? Please stand by. How's the mission going, Spy Fox? I've gotten into the kitchen of the Chateau La Roche. Watch it. You could be in the belly of the beast. Belly of the beast, eh? I'll keep that in mind. Monkey Penny, out. More like Monkey Penny Cryptic. <laughs> All right, let's actually enter the restaurant besides in the kitchen. Well, this is a fancy place, and why is there. A fly Oddly trap enough, here? the Venus flytrap is not a native of the rainforest. They actually are a native to the coast of North and South Carolina. This little fella is a long way from home. And there is one guy here. He's here early, and he's got the biggest chair. What's up, dude? Ah, Napoleon LaRoche. I should have known you'd taken up with the likes of Smelly. So Spycore has sent the famous Spy Fox to try and stop my plans for world domination. World domination? Er, uh, of course. Ha! Since you are one of the few people who could possibly understand my genius, I will explain my entire plan to you in nauseating detail. You see, I reversed the scale on the Smelly Evil Dog Vault Assembly instructions. I've created a 1,000 to 1 scale, fully functioning evil dog butt. Just where do you think you can hide such a monstrosity? You silly spy. You're standing in it. Of course, you've disguised the evil dog butt as the centerpiece for the World's Fair. Complete with a revolving restaurant. One has to eat, no? Observe the means to my world domination. <laughs> People buying tickets for the World's Fair do not realize that as they file through the turnstile, they are unwittingly winding the highly advanced clockwork mechanism within the evil dog box. When the one millionth person has filed through, the dog box, now wound to maximum capacity, will embark upon its horrifying rampage of destruction! Unleash the dog bot. All the world's leaders will sit up and beg for mercy. It is unstoppable. It cannot be called off because it has no off switch. Yes, I have removed the off switch and hidden it somewhere in the world's fair. So cleverly, so subtly that you will never find it. That's what you think, LaRoche. Even if you did find the off switch, you would still need the activation code to turn the switch off. And even if you had the off switch and the activation code, you could never hope to get past the diabolically clever security device located in the evil dog bot's Achilles heel, which is the only way into the dog bot's inner workings. It is hopeless, Monsieur Le Fox. There's no way you can beat me! <laughs> so many good thumbnail opportunities. You'll never get away with this, LaRoche. Oh, I think I will. And now, Monsieur Le Spy Fox, I do. <laughs> he needs the arm extension to reach the button. Such a subtle job, but it's great. Judging by those monstrous metallic molars, I've been imprisoned in the dog bot's mouth. How humiliating. 
I must find a way out of this cell so I can stop that evil roach. If I could only reach that fire escape through these teeth. <laughs> nice of him to put a fire escape this high up. I can gather information about La Roach with this talk balloon. So we kind of got the premise for the story. La Roach is very incompetent, just explained his whole evil plan to us. He's basically like, well, literally a roach version of Napoleon. It's kind of funny. And yeah, this is going to be a fun Let's Play, dude. That's where we're going to leave it for today. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Colorful Artie. I hope you tune in for the rest of this Let's Play. It's going to be awesome. We're going to have to escape from the mouth of the dog bot. <laughs> yeah, this is this is a very interesting premise, I've got to say. Really nice job, Humongous Entertainment, for making such a great series. And until we meet again, my friends, have a great day, and God bless.